Hello guys, welcome to the fifth class of the expert course from Script Case. My name is Carlos and I'm your instructor for this course. In today's class basically we're going to create a user-defined report with a custom HTML template in order to show a billing summary for the customer. We're also going to create some apps that will complete the system engine showing the appointment history, details, and rating appointments. Then let's create a report used to any system user to perform actions in specific appointments. Okay, so let me open up your script case. Let's log in here. Okay, let's access here the project. Okay, in this case we're going to create a grid application. Alright, but at first, I'm going to show you guys the HTML templates that Scriptcase offers. Basically, we're going to go here to Layout, HTML Templates. And what are we going to do? These are some templates that the app that Scriptcase has to offer. These are native ones. These are templates for the header, actually. Um, if we close this part here, open up the user defined. Um, we're going to create a user HTML for the grid. So basically we're going to upload a file. Okay, so let's so upload one. I'm going to select a file. Okay, so let's go back one. Code. Grids. Appointment billing. I'm going to load this invoice here. Okay, oops, didn't select it. Invoice open. Hold up. Let me create a new one. Invoice of the type user targets the project. Let me see if it allows me. Invoice. Strange, it's not selecting. Well, in that case, let's snap up here using my ditter sublime. Okay, um, let me save this. Okay. Well, um, basically, let me explain to you guys this template that I, did, that I just imported to script case. You can see here, it's a basic HTML actually, and as you can see, it contains a couple of script cases, keys, actually variables. As you can see, there's the company logo there, the invoice number here, invoice date, invoice date limit, customer name, so these are variables, but in this case, since it's a HTML template, they don't represent fields, they represent uh, key references, as in positions on this HTML template. Let me show you guys a preview. This is what it's going to look like. All right. Basically, I'm going to reference each position of those references with fields in a grid application. All right. So since I already have this implemented, let's create a new application, a grid application. Using, let's see if there's a custom SQL for it. Yes. using this SQL, which basically is the same SQL that we used in the, it was in report PDF, it's a, it's a little bit different. You get this customer email and place it near the other ones. Okay, yeah, that's better. Let me place it here. 
And I'm going to call it appointment billing. All right, let's create this application. All right, basically I'm going to disable all the modules, leave in only the grid module enabled. So let me disable this, 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 and this. Going to the grid and saying to user defined as the orientation. All right, saving this, I'm going to need to now go here to layout settings. All right. This allows me to um, select the body template, and this is only enabled when you set the orientation of the grid as a user defined. This allows me to select the invoice HTML template that I just created. So selecting it, it's going to set this as the background of the grid application. So if I just run it as it is, it's not going to show me any data, just a background actually. Okay, I still need to inform the position of each field. Okay, so let's go back here to script case. Before associating each field, um, I need to create three more fields, actually four. Let's go here, create the fields. Four. Um, the first one is going to be a date. Name is going to be due date. Um, the second one is going to be a barcode. Name is going to be barcode. Third one's going to be item desk. It's going to be a text. And the fourth one's going to be the item value. One's going to be currency. Item value. Create that. Okay, so I created those. Let's go back here to layouts and access the header and footer. I'm going to disable the display header so that this part here doesn't get displayed. And I'm going to remove all the buttons from the toolbar only. Um, keeping the export buttons. So let's go here to toolbar. Okay. These go out. These two. And the bottom one as well. Let's run it. Again, it's not associating the fields yet. Then you run. Illegal. Oh. We go here to barcode. It's because it's a type actually. Change here to code 39. Okay, it will run now. Okay, now let's uh, start applying those fields. Um, associating them actually. Let's go here to field positioning and what it does basically um, on the left side are the fields that are displayed here as you can see um, there's even a barcode here in the bottom. It's listed alphabetically. And what I'm going to do is um, go to this select field here select field and start applying the fields from my query and also the fields I created. So the barcode will be barcode. The company level is going to be an image. Uh, let me select that image. File. Oops. Great project. Um, general images. File upload. Select a file. This logo right here. Add selected. Um, customer address is going to be the field. Customer address. 
City Zip. Zip. Customer email will be the email. Name will be the name. Phone. The description. It's going to be the item description. Actually, let's leave that one to last. The invoice date will be the start date. Invoice date limit will be the due date. Invoice number will be the appointment ID. The items description will be the item description itself. The item value, item value, order discount, where is it, discount, grand total and being the total price, tax, being the additional charges, and the order total being the price. I guess for the description, there's not actually much fields left. It's going to be the item description. Yeah. Let's run it. Okay, it's not loading the description here, nor the invoice due date and the other ones here because I still need to apply the code to the event on record. Let's go here to the events on record. Let me copy here the code. So what it does, it's concatenating the customer city with the customer state and customer zip. Uh, the due date is going to be today's date plus 10 days. The barcode, it's applying it uh, manually. Then I'm getting the appointment description price from the appointment's ID. Um, running uh, the SC lookup to return the values, checking if there's any values to be returned. Um, if there is, I'm running for each of each item that's been returned. As you can see, this for each, it's getting the result set and accessing the key value. All right, so it's getting the value and applying it to the description and item value, actually concatenating. So let's run it now. One. Okay. The invoice due date. You get this value here, see what it says. Hold up. Let me debug this echo. Come on, it doesn't return anything. I oh, know it's right here. Okay, so it adds, goes to October 9th. It's supposed to be working actually. Um, let, I know. Uh, let me go here to the due date. Instead of being a date, let me set it to be a text. Let me save this. Um, let me go back to the event and remove that echo that I did. I think my session expired. Let's access here the appointments again. Access here the appointment billing. Uh, let me just verify if the field changed successfully to no, it didn't. Let me set it to text. Okay, save this. Then go here to the events on record, and let me remove this comment here. Actually, this echo that I'm doing. Let's run it. So 
Still not loading here, but I know what it is actually. It's this format here. Let me change it. Uh, it's supposed D M Y. This. This is supposed to load it correctly formatted. Okay, so it's not loading it correctly formatted. Um, there's a city actually that can place the lookup settings automatic. City. It's supposed to be the city, right? Oh no, that's the zip code. Sorry. Where I place the city? No, I'm confused here. Where's the city? It's a customer city zip. Yeah, where's the city? Customer address. Central Park. Any on record what the, what's it doing? The city. Alright. In the field positioning, where do I place the city? Okay, I think it now show correctly. Los Angeles. But it's still not concatenating. That's strange. Just check this, guys. Um, it's really strange. It's supposed to be loading it, actually. You know what I can do? I can do this, actually. City equals and get this go back here to the field positioning and here in the city zip I place a value which will be this global variable and in the application global variable I set that global variable as out since it's being applied here. So let me run it. Or I can do this. It's a city name, right? Let me check it here. You can basically just copy this. And place it here. Call this DS. And here, I place this instead. I misspelled it here. Los Angeles, California, and the zip code here. Okay? So, guys, any questions about this application? 
Um, Arnold suggested here that the formatted date should be MDY to be consistent to the invoice date. Um, that kind of depends on your region. Free to set that actually. Because the format month, day, and year, um, if I'm not mistaken, that's an American format, right? It does? My bad. You're right. Sorry. Thanks. I didn't notice that. Okay, any more questions? Any questions, guys? I know this application is a little bit weird at start. For those who don't have knowledge at first of HTML and applying those spheres directly. And it's kind of tricky, though, so... Okay, I have a question here from Arnold. He wants to know how to change the mask in runtime. Let me see a way. Uh, just a moment. Well, um, there's two ways, actually. You can do it by JavaScript, something like that. Or there's a macro. Hold up. That kind of reads the region that you're in. Depending on the language that the user selects, of course. Macros. Here's the get regional. Alright. You can use this macro, se get regional. That kind of returns en underline us, uh, pt underline br, pt underline pt, es underline es. So based on that, you can do your validation and change the type of formats in PHP instead. Because using JavaScript on the grid application isn't such a good idea, though. It's a little bit more complicated to do. Okay, um, let's continue here. I'm going to create another application. Let's create a grid application based on the appointment's details. Okay. Let me get here the SQL that's prepared for this application. Uh, where is it? Grid appointment details. Okay, let me run the application so you guys can see exactly what it's returning. Um, this is going to be a simple application. Basically, what I'm going to do is make this application become a nested grid for the staff and customer application. Okay, so let me set this one up first. Actually, yeah, um... Appointments type ID. There's the appointments type description already. Yeah, the description's already here. Yeah, basically there isn't any lookup settings to be set up here. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up those two grids that I created. The grid appointment staff. The grid appointments customers. And... The administrator also. I'm going to edit all three of them. Okay, so for the grid appointments admin, what I'm going to do for one, I'm going to do for all three. All right, so I'm going to go here to nested grid, go to links, new link. The nested grid, it's kind of a 
master detail. If you think of it um, like that, because it's very similar. I didn't call it details. In a link, basically, it works like a master detail because when I select your grid appointments details, it only allows grids for this type of connect, this type of link. Um, I'm going to pass the appointments ID as a parameter. Let me save it. Okay, so I'm going to disable the header. Okay, what else? Yeah, just the header I'm going to disable. Uh, let me run the application so you guys can see exactly what it does. You see this, right? Um, kind of creates another column on the right side, displaying that other grid application there. I know it kind of looks weird, but um, there's another option I can do. Actually, there's just settings. If I go here to the nested grid settings, you access it. I can basically do this. Enable a tree view and set the position of the nested grid below the record and I want it to be aligned to the left for instance. When I run the application this is how it's going to look like. You see this um, arrow here? Just click it, and that's how it's going to display beneath uh, the record. Basically goes on for each one of them, okay? Same thing I'm going to do with the other two. I'm going to go here to the Grid Appointments Customer, Nested Grid, Links, New Link. I'm going to call it again Details. Uh, let's say I place it as a standard. Details, Create, Grid Appointments Details. So need of our appointments, save, disable the header. Actually, let me enable the header so you guys can see uh, the distinctive label for each field exactly. Um, enable the tree view, set it below. Alignment to the left. Uh, this is displaying now because I enabled the header. All right. Yeah, basically I should leave the header enabled for the other one too. I'm going to set it also for the staff nested grid. New links, details, create, grid details, passing the appointment ID, leaving the header, going here to settings, set the animal tree view as yes, below the record, align to the left. Okay, now um, these applications are all finished. Uh, let me close them. I'm not going to use them now. Just leave here the appointments billing. Um, let's create another grid application. This one's for us to view the history of the appointments. So here's the appointments history. The name is going to be grid appointments history. Um, there's a where clause I need to apply. You can get here the SQL for this grid. It's basically just to filter out the appointment. Okay, so create. You run the application so you guys can see the whole information that's listing. for the first one. So if you guys remember that in some of the other applications I was implementing a routine on the on after events 
those uh, routines basically are to populate um, this table here that shows a log of every step that occurred during this specific appointment. Okay, now I'm going to remove a couple of the fields here. Uh, let's go here to field positioning. Um, let me remove the history ID and the appointments ID. Let me save this. Um, I'm going to apply lookup settings for the appointment status ID. Automatic. Create. Appointment status. Status description. Okay, so it's showing here the status for each um, requirement done. And what am I going to use this application for? I'm going to open up a couple of applications. Um, the form appointments, if form request appointments. The form appointments, if form request appointments. Let me edit those. The form allows us to create a master detail link also with grids. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to create a master detail called history to that grid application. Pass in the appointments ID. Now let me place a higher width for this. Place 800 pixels for this. Let me run it. So the first one shows me the requests for it and all the history that it contains. I can either choose not to display the header, nor the navigation buttons. Let's see how that looks like. I kind of leaves a scroll bar here and it's kind of strange though so basically I'm going to display it alright so, save that let me run it okay so I think it's better this way to not show the scroll bar. All right, same thing I'm going to do. The form request appointments. Create here another uh, master detail link. History. Create. Appointment ID, save. It kind of validates that a grid and allows me to set these other options. I'm going to set it also to 800 pixels. I think it's because I set this a static width. Let me check here. Yeah, I set it to a static width. Let me remove that. If I remove that, it'll now go to go to the center actually.
Okay. Uh, let's continue to the next application. I'm going to create a form application to allow the user to rate the service done. Actually, by the appointment, actually. So, close up these two forms here. And let's create here a new application. Form. Based on the appointments. I'm going to call this one form appointments rating. Create. All right, so I'm going to remove basically all the fields, just leaving the appointments rating. So everything here to here goes. Save that. The toolbar, I'm only going to enable the update button on the toolbar. So here to here goes. Here goes. Here goes. Okay. And in the field appointment rating, I'm going to change its type. It's going to be a radio button. Radio. And being a radio button, I'm going to set its lookup method to manual. Apply it to manual. I'm going to do a valuation from 1 to 5. Being 1, very bad. 2, bad. 3, regular. 4, good. And 5, very good. Okay, so first one, very bad. 1. Bad, two. Regular, three. Good, oops, four. Very, good, five. Well, if I run this application the way it is, it's going to display me only the radio button, all right. But still, it's going to be a little bit strange because it's going to be one column. And it's not very uh, attractive using this, in fact. But it didn't save the very good. No. Very good, five. Okay, so to make this a little bit better, I'm going to say that this uh, field contains five columns. Okay, so it starts here, very bad, bad, regular, good, and very good. Okay, I'm still going to insert some code to it. So let me close this. Um, here, forms, form appointments rating, on after update. It's that history code, actually. It's on the on after update. On after update. Comment this. User login. Yeah. Admin one. Well, appointments. Okay, so if I mark this rating now, it's going to show for the. It's going to show for the appointment one. That that specific customer rated very bad. So if I just mark this and go here save, it's modified. So if I, let's say if I go to the storing now, run this grid application. If 
Right place here one to check the history of this one. The appointments was rated. Rating one. Who did it? The admin, because I set it on the global variable URSR login, which is the global variable that's going to be created by the security module that we're going to create later on. Well, um, this form application here is finished. Um, Arnold is asking, so all these code behind code gets generated one way. Um, what do you mean, actually? No, that code I wrote, actually. Um, this code that you see here, my TXT files, um, it's custom made um, PHP code using the variables from the applications. So the only code that script case generates for you, let me just uh, show you for you to get a glimpse. Um, application source code. This is what script case generates for you. So it gives you a total of lines of code that it generates. We need to select all of that and show. Um, this is what you get. This is the source code for this specific application. That form application that I, that I just developed being the ratings. So, yeah, it's a lot of things that's generated behind that basically not everybody knows. Okay? And sometimes we consider like that, well, it's a form application that contains only one field. Why does it have 27,000 lines of code? Basically, it's all the treatments done and all the tests done behind the scenes and also being all the third-party libraries loaded so it can do the connections, validate the fields, uh, the database um, layer so you can connect request the information and do the DML uh, processing so yeah it's a lot of code alright so this application here is finished um, the next application I want to create today is going to be a grid application that will support to view all the information of a scheduled appointment and it will show some action buttons depending on who is accessing it and the appointment status of the current record, in fact. Okay, so let's create this application. It's going to be a grid application based on the appointments table. Grid. Appointments. Let me get the um, where clause that's for this application. SQL filtering the appointment. Okay, so at first we all know the data that returns from this application. So I'm going to get to the programming parts. All right, so let's go down here and let's create a PHP method. Close this. Let's create a PHP method called executes btn. So it's going to be executing by the button that's loading in. Execute btn. Okay, so um, this method here is going to receive one parameter. How do we add parameters to a function since that wizard previously didn't ask for any? Simple. This icon here allows us to add a parameter. So let's just click on it. And here is that it asks us the amount of parameters that we want to pass. So I'm just going to add one, add. 
I'm going to call it var stat. All right. I'm not going to set a default or a standard value for it. I'm just going to save. And I'm going to go here and get the routine that's going to be in this method. It's from this up. Just comment this line. Okay, so it's going to again be accessing the appointments, updating their uh, status actually getting their information uh, the customer name customer the staff name the status for each appointment now verifying the status for each one of them if it's one three four five it's going to do this application of value to the local variables and also sending the history points all right um, next step that I need to do comes to the part that I'm going to create the buttons for this application. So let's go and create those buttons. All right. Save that changes. Now I'm going to create four BHP buttons. The first one's going to be called BTN cancel. Um, it's labeled it's going to be cancel. And it's going to call that method as a cute BTN. And the value that's going to be passing is three. Okay, uh, new button PHP BTN. Oops. Check in. I'm going to call it check in. Is it cute? BTN. The value that's going to be passing is four. Let me save that. PHP. Next one's BTN concluded. See, BTN concludes. BTN. Conclude. Oops. Conclude. It's going to call it the execute. BTN passing the value five. Call a new one. PHP BTN reopen. Reopen. Is it cute? BTN one. Okay. Um, after these, we're going to create a couple more buttons, but not exactly PHP buttons. We're going to create um, some link buttons. All right. So let's go here. New button. The first one is going to be BTN line rating. It's going to be a link type. That's so annoying. Rate. And let's link to the appointments rating. Is it here? Okay, passing on here the appointments ID. Right, 
empty. And it's going to open up as a model and close after the update. Save. The next one I'm going to create is going to be the BTN invoice. Link. Call it invoice. Man, that's annoying. I'm going to call the report PDF that I created. Let's create a new one here. BTN. Billing. The link type. Um, linking to the appointments billing that I created. Save. Okay, so let's run this application. So we have all of these buttons here, okay? Um, they're not going to be displayed for everyone, right? Only in certain occasions. As you saw when I ran the application, it asked me for the current status. Let me do that again. It asked me for the VAR current status. It's because it's going to be calculated in the application. Um, so we can decide which button is going to be displaying depending on the status of the record. And also there's going to be another validation I'm going to implement now. In the event script init. We get here the code. So getting here the script init. This is routine. Basically, it's what it's going to do. It's going to get the user group global variable that we're going to create in the security module. And validating, if it's two, it's going to be a staff accessing. So if it's staff, logically, the staff can never rate his own um, work. Only the customer can do that. Then I'm going to evaluate the status. So if it's one, only the cancel and check-in is going to be enabled. If it's two, only the reopen and check-in is going to be enabled. If it's three, everything is going to be disabled. If it's four, only the concluded is going to be enabled. Else, the invoice and billing is going to be enabled. When it's the customer, the customer itself, himself, can never check in an invoice. Only the staff can do that and he himself cannot um, mark a appointment as concluded only by assurance of the staff and basically doing the same thing if the old status is one the btn cancel is going to be enabled if it's two the cancel and reopen is going to be enabled if it's five the rating invoice and billing is going to be enabled else everything's off and by default, everything's on when the group is the administrator. So if I run this application, let's say it's one here and I'm a staff. Doing this, only the cancel and check-in is enabled. Okay, so it works. Um, what I'm going to do now is go here to toolbar and 
I'm going to get all these buttons. I'm going to add them to a group label. I'm going to say actions. All right, so if I run this application now, one, two, two. Check and reopen is enabled. All right, let me set up the lookup settings for the staff and customer ID. Staff. Automatic. Create select. Staff. Check that. All right. Customer himself. Automatic. Create select. Customers. All right. You conclude it is enabled for Isaac Luke. All right, but let's test the case if it's an administrator. It's going to ignore type of, of the current status. So if I just leave it at that and just place here user group one, everything's enabled, okay? Okay then, seeing that there aren't any more questions coming in. Today that's it. Uh, there, those are all the applications that I was supposed to create with you guys today. Monday we're going to create a tab application. We're going to create the dashboard for the administrator. A couple of grids and a couple of charts. And we're going to create the calendar application using the blank application. So we're going to use some custom PHP code to build the application using the internal full calendar library that we have. So it's kind of we're going to create the calendar application manually as saying. All right. Uh, Arnold is asking when will the code and recording be posted? I think the code itself I'm only going to be enabled to actually I'm only going to be able sorry to give you guys a project once we finish the course. Unfortunately, since this is the first class that I have with script case nine to develop this specific project. Currently, you have access to the appointments uh, system in your script case by those uh, native templates, but that version of the appointments is designed for script case 8.1. So the new features won't be in it actually. All right then, thanks for watching today's class. Bye guys.